Hi, my name is Michael Allen, and I'm going to teach you how to remove the background from your 360 degree product images. So here we go. Um, right now we have some images pulled up from one of our clients from ImageEyes, and he let us use these as a test. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and give it a shot. Um, so let's take a look at these real quick. Um, you'll notice that this image, we're just pulling one out as an example. Um, is that we got a nice black statue here and he shot it on a nice white background so it's going to be pretty easy to um, blow out this white background and uh, make just the statue show up um, and it should look pretty good so what we'll do first is we will not open up all the images at once because that could potentially crash Photoshop if you got a computer that can't quite handle it and most can't um, so you want to make sure that you just work with one image and to do that we don't want to repetitively do the same thing over and over again, so what we're going to do is we're going to do something really cool. Trust me, it's going to be really great. You're going to like it if you have never done it before. It's called Make an Action, and an action is like a little robot that just records what you do, and then it plays it back, so then you don't have to do it every time by yourself. It just does it for you. So to do that, here's how we're going to do it. Pretty simple. Um, you'll have to pull up your Actions palette. You just go to Window, and you go to Actions. Mine's already pulled up. And uh, once you're here, you'll see that yours probably won't have as many um, different actions in here. These are all different actions for different projects I work on. Um, but here, you'll notice that you'll have a little folder here, and it's called Create New Set. Create that, and we're going to name the set, right? Just bear with me so far. Um, and this one we'll call um, just uh, 360 Actions. Pretty self-explanatory and uh, click OK and you'll notice that what it that did is it created a folder right here that's it and uh, anything we do is going to be recorded now inside this folder so we'll create a new action and this action is going to record everything we do and it's going to go inside that folder called 360 actions so in this case we're going to call this action um, we're going to make it simple we're going to say um, curves and hue And click record. There we go. And what we're going to do is recording right now. We're going to do. Uh, we're going to go to a layer, and we're going to go to a new adjustment layer, and we're going to go to curves. All right. Just click OK. You don't have to adjust anything yet. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Next, we're going to go do that again. We're going to go to layer, and uh, we're going to go to uh, new adjustment layer again, and we're going to go to hue and saturation. There we go. And just click OK. Alright, now stop recording. There's a little stop recording button here. Stop recording. And uh, now we can go to each of these layers. We can click the little arrow that's right next to it and it makes it drop down. And if we double click the text inside here, it'll actually make a little pop-up come up. And um, you can click OK. And uh, you'll be able to actually adjust now this thing you recorded in Photoshop. And you see see what we can do now? Now we can make that background go away. And what I'm doing here is we got a little graph and this just is a graph of the bright and the dark colors. As you get further to the right, it's brighter colors. Uh, as you get further to the left, it gets darker. And uh, you can see here this, all this, this big spike. That's the big white background we have uh, in this photo. And anything we, th that's to the right of this little white arrow thing right here um, will get totally blown out pure white. So as we, move it for, uh, as we move it further to the left, you'll notice that the rest of the photo gets completely blown out pure white because, like I said, anything to the right of this little white arrow gets blown out completely. And it's the same thing for the blacks. As you go further and further over, anything to the left of it gets blown out pure black. So it's pretty interesting how this thing works. Well, the cool thing is, is that when we move it over just enough, we're able to move it over just enough to get rid of all of the uh, white background stuff. Okay, so I'm going to move it over just a little bit more just to make sure that we get it from all the other um, photos, just in case some of the photos are darker than the others. Um, so I'm going to click OK, and uh, boom, we have our uh, curves all set. Now we're going to do the same thing for the um, 
hue and saturation. And we noticed here that the uh, colors look a little uh, not so green. So we want to move it over because this is a little bit of a green statue. Oh, no, that's the wrong way. We can keep going the other way. And uh, that looks pretty good. Maybe that's how it originally was. Um, and uh, it looks a little too green, though, because we added that extra kind of contrast to remove the background. So we're going to move this arrow over to the left a little bit to desaturate it to kind of make the statue look like how it originally was. And we're not going to touch lightness. If we do that, then it's going to make the background look really dark. And you don't want that. So you want to bring that back to zero. Okay, so don't touch that. Click OK. Good. Now we have our curves and hue um, all set up. And that's an action. It's going to do its thing. Now, is that all we want to do? Um, no, we also want to crop it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select all these, and I'm going to hit the Delete button, or the Backspace if you're on a Windows. And uh, now we're going to record a new action. So you go down to this little folded piece of paper again, just click it, and we're going to call this action crop, C-R-O-P, simple as that. Click record, and uh, now we're going to crop it. Now I recommend if you're using Imageize to upload your um, images and to display them on the web, uh, then you should crop your images to um, 256, or sorry, uh, 2560 by 1920. And uh, you know, someday in the future we'll make it bigger, but right now, uh, as of October 14th, 2012, um, that's the um, re recommended size. Of course, that that's a great size to have because it's um, uh, going to keep it at really, really high res uh, so that it shows up really well on uh, different kinds of computers with really, really big screens. So there it is. Anyways, now that we're on the crop tool, it's recording, we're ready to go. All right, now we're going to crop it. So I don't know where the other uh, images are in relative to this one, so it might move around a little bit, and we're not sure that if we crop it here, if it's going to be perfectly centered, or if it's over here, it's going to be perfectly centered with the rotation. So I'm just going to give us a little bit of extra room. Um, I have another tutorial on actually how to stack the images on top of each other and then make them kind of transparent on top of each other so you can actually see how each one lines up. And that way it's easier to crop it, but we're just kind of doing the, the quick way for right now. Um, so I'm just going to give us a little bit of room. Um, and by the way, check out that tutorial on how to do that um, <laughs> when you get some chance. And uh, there we go. So, all right. So we're going to kind of center it here, make it pretty nice and uh, well centered. Hit enter. There we go. Okay, cool. And uh, when you crop something, it's always good to sharpen it just a little bit. So I'm going to go to uh, Filter, and then I'm going to go to Sharpen. And I like to go to Smart Sharpen. Um, for this, I usually like to have the amount at around 40, and I like to have the radius at uh, 0 0.4. Why? Well, trust me, just a lot of trial and error. From my opinion, it works out pretty well that way. Um, but you can try some different settings if you want to. Okay, so, so far so good, huh? Okay, so all we got to do is uh, hit the stop record button. There we go. And uh, boom, we have got two actions made. And we, if we play each one, actually, if we go on back to our history and go right back to the beginning to open, all right? And then I play this action by just clicking it and clicking play. Boom, our curves and hue sets done. We click play again, and when we for crop, crops it perfectly. Okay, cool. Um, and the last thing we need to do is we need to save it. And we can also build another action for that. So what we got to do is we click this little folded piece of paper here, create new action again, and just call it simply save. Okay, click record. And uh, now all we got to do for this action is um, save it somewhere. And remember, Photoshop's really smart. It actually does exactly what you tell it to do. The problem is, is that it does exactly what you tell it to do. So if you tell it to do something and then later you realize, eh, that's not really what I wanted, well, Photoshop's going to say, well, that's exactly what you told me a week ago. And, well, okay, Photoshop, but it's not smart enough to do that. So you have to figure things out um, before it kind of figures things out for you. So what you got to do is you click Save As, File, Save As, and this is where you got to be really careful, okay? I'm going to go on my desktop, and I'm going to save this to a folder I already made in advance. I never move it. I never change it. That's why Photoshop likes that folder so much, because it never goes anywhere. It's called um, 360PSD. I got a bunch of other ones that are ones that I actually use, but these ones are all just for the tutorials. So uh, there it is. I got to keep them there for you guys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyways. Um, 
360 PSD, and that's what I called mine. You can call yours that also. I kind of recommend it because a lot of tutorials are based on this. So uh, if I were you, I would just call this 360 space PSD in all capital letters. Okay, click save. Boom. And the uh, last thing you can do is click, uh, f you can go to file and um, uh, close. Uh, I, I just hit Command W on a Mac. Uh, I'm not sure how to do it on Windows, but um, anyways, just close this document and uh, stop recording. Always remember to stop recording when you're done.